Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. I normally like to stay within criminal law or firearms law, but I was asked a question that I think is so fascinating that I'm going to step outside of my wheelhouse to try to tackle it. Now, hopefully I don't embarrass myself here, but what I want to talk about is a company called Hitpiece. And what they were doing is selling NFTs based on sort of popular music. And when I say were, they have already taken their web page down, although who knows if it stays down. They're talking about coming back up at some point. Now, the issue is, is that uh, they're selling these NFTs based on all sorts of popular tracks. And lots of artists have taken to Twitter and other sort of messaging systems to say, hey, you can't do this. This is my music and you guys are selling NFTs based on it. And I never gave you permission. We don't have any sort of licensing agreement. So one example of this, and this is the tweet I was originally linked to, says, please spread the message far and wide that join hit piece are attempting to sell digital assets they simply cannot legally own. There's no legal organization with authority to authenticate these transactions and no existing contracts between composers, performers, or publishers. And this one comes from David Wise, who is a video game uh, soundtrack composer, has some really impressive uh, work out there. Now, uh, one of the things that's kind of, well, it's interesting here to ask the question of, is this correct? You know, what does copyright let us do or prevent people from doing in the NFT sphere? Because when we think about property interests, most uh, sort of casual, uh, most lay people uh, really think of property interests as sort of an on off switch. You either own something or you don't. But lawyers tend to view it as a bundle of rights is the usual sort of metaphor. And so if we take, for example, my house, one of the rights I have is the right to exclude other people from my property. Because I own this house, I can tell the neighbor kids, hey, get off my lawn. And in theory, they have to do it. Although, you know, whether or not the neighbor kids are going to listen to me is, you know, questionable. But, uh, you know, you can tell people that they're not allowed in your house anymore. You can ban them. You can invite them in. You've got this right to control access. Uh, similarly, you can sell your house and various other things, but you can split up these rights as well. If I decide that I don't want to live in my house anymore, but instead I want to rent it to somebody, if I you know lease it out to somebody, that tenant now has the right to occupy the space and to deny access, even potentially to me. But what they wouldn't have is the right to, for instance, sell that property. You know, it's not their land, they can't sell it, so they only get part of the bundle of rights. Now, copyright is similarly a bundle of sort of connected rights. And interestingly, copyright never anticipated the existence of NFTs. So copyright can allow you to prevent other people from making copies. It can allow you to prevent other people from making derivative works subject to fair dealing here in Canada, fair use in the US. Uh, it can prevent people from doing things like streaming or live performances, these kinds of things. But there isn't anything in copyright that prevents somebody from linking to something. There was litigation over this in the past, and it seems to have been settled in at least the countries I'm aware of, that linking is not inherently a violation of copyright, so long as you're linking to a place that is legitimately allowed to serve you that content. So if I post something to my Facebook page that is a link to a newspaper article, that would not be normally considered a copyright infringement. Meanwhile, if instead I take the entire content of that and paste it into you know, a Facebook post, that would be copyright infringement. So that's an important sort of distinction. Critically, Hitpiece has said that they're not uh, hosting any music and they're not uh, sharing or streaming any music. So it's not really clear what these NFTs link to or if they're just kind of a reference to something. Uh, they're, I, as I said, they've taken the page down, so I can't check them out and see what they were up to. But, you know, just as a sort of thought experiment, if you were to create an NFT that contains a link to a particular Spotify URL, uh, would that be a violation of copyright? And it doesn't appear so. You can make references to something or link to something, as I said, normally without violating copyright. So as a bit of a, a dramatic example here, I cannot include Disney's The Little Mermaid in this video. I couldn't take that entire movie and just slap it in right here. And you wouldn't want me to, but 
I couldn't do that. Uh, the mouse would send their leg breakers to really ruin my day. At best, they'd take the video down, but they could sue me for all the money I have and all the money I ever will have. So that would be a very bad idea. But there's nothing that stops me from just referencing the existence of Disney's The Little Mermaid. And in fact, I can go a step further. I can create an item that references the existence. You know, this piece of paper here. It doesn't contain any content from that particular creative work, but it references the existence of it. Now, this is not really a great analog to an NFT quite yet. If we really want to make it closer, we got to do this. So now it's got a price tag on it. If you want this paper NFT, um, you can have it for the low price of $25,000. Uh, I guarantee it will increase in value. This is not actually a guarantee and yeah. I also promise that I will never make another one. I, you know, printer will never go burr again. Really, I promise. And that no one else will even though I have no way to actually control that because I don't actually have the rights to stop anyone else from printing out something exactly like this and selling it for maybe half the price I am. So this really kind of illustrates a fundamental problem with NFTs and what they promise to do because NFTs are often promising to sell you some sort of content, but the NFT doesn't actually include that right inherently. It's this weird, you know, all you really own with an NFT is a link to something. And there's not even any guarantee that that link is going to continue to function. There's NFTs out there that have already suffered from link rot, where it's an NFT that just connects you to a, a 404. So all of this is kind of, as I said, interesting. Copyright did not contemplate this idea of an NFT for something else. And what this means is that it appears that you can make NFTs for all sorts of things. You know, I could make an NFT that has my neighbor's car's VIN number embedded in it. Now, that would give you no ownership rights over my neighbor's car. I can't sell you that car because I don't own it. But I can certainly make that NFT. There's nothing that says that I can't. So this is interesting. And a lot of people who are buying NFTs may not realize that they're not getting what they think they're getting. Uh, you, the old sort of, or the common joke is, oh, listen, you know, somebody spent half a million dollars for this ape, but I can just right click and hit save as. Well, you may actually not be legally entitled to do that right click save as because of copyright, but the funny thing is that the person who spent half a million on that NFT might also not have the right to right click and save as to save that image to their own hard drive because that might also be a copyright infringement. So yeah, it's, it's interesting, but a lot of the NFTs out there seem to be, uh, people think that they're selling something that they're not. So ultimately, I don't think that Mr. Wise is correct here in terms of the legal application. There doesn't appear to be any legal principle that I can find that prevents HitPiece from creating an NFT and saying, this NFT represents, you know, the Beatles catalog. They can't sell you the Beatles catalog. They can't host that or share it or give you a copy, but they can certainly make an NFT and sort of play make-believe about it. So... Yeah, this is really interesting. I suspect that this is going to be a big area for litigation in future or possibly for uh, some sort of copyright law change. We may actually see copyright change to create some sort of NFT um, interest, but that hasn't happened yet. So I'm going to be really interested to see what happens. And as I said, this is an interesting problem and interesting, as you know, means expensive. But this is the best kind of expensive problem because it's going to be expensive to someone else. That's my favorite kind of expensive, ex expensive to someone else. So we'll, uh, I'm going to sort of keep an eye on this. I don't know if I'm going to be doing sort of follow-up videos on this question because it's not my usual focus. But this is really interesting. This place where an emerging technology is running into laws that don't move as fast necessarily and is creating a very interesting disconnect between people's expectations 
and possibly their reasonable expectations. I don't think it's unfair for artists to be kind of pissed about this. But the law doesn't seem to actually support the, the rights interest that they're hoping that they can actually exert here. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting. I hope that I haven't muddied things more. And if you want to send me hate mail about how great NFTs are, um, please send it to me as an NFT. Thanks. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like this video. Please share it with your friends. Please subscribe to see more content. And uh, I want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Jonathan Wheeler, Canada's National Firearms Association, Mike, Kyle Martin, CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited and Mark Olivier Damour. And at the $20 level, Peter Hilger, Mark Whittington, Jane Babe and Laxor, Hay uh, Haywire, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Bruno R., Andrew Elsich, and Aaron Delso. Thank you as well to the $10 supporters who are going to be in the crawl immediately following. And the other thing I'm going to mention is that I'm working on an update to the Roger Katanko story. I'm taking a little bit of time on this one because I want to make sure that I get it right. And so I've been doing some follow-up and trying to chase down things just to make sure that the information I give you guys is useful. And, you know, in there's going to be a lot of uh, misinformation and confusion on this one. And I want to try at least as best as I can to be a source of useful information and not a source of further confusion. So I hope to have that out in the next couple of days or at least one update on that. Anyway, uh, so stay tuned. But uh, thank you for watching. I hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.